All right. Good morning and welcome everybody to the Never Stop Healing podcast. This is your host of the day, Kate Archibald, and I am honored to be here and uh, be able to present some really, really cool stuff to everyone um, about what's going on. Uh, uh, unfortunately, not able to, to get Reagan on here today. I know that's that's who everyone is the most excited to, to see. Um, but I do have um, a, a lovely co-host today, Andy Bryce. She'll be uh, joining us here in just a moment. I um, just promoted her to a panelist. There you are. How's it going, Andy? Great. How are you? Doing great. And so while uh, Reagan's away, he's uh, doing some additional training. Um, he's always, uh, I'm, I'm just amazed at how much bandwidth he has to expand his knowledge and, and uh, information base so that he can serve uh, serve everyone of uh, in his audience and um, in the in the organization better. And so um, he's he's out today. So Andy and I are going to try to keep you guys as entertained and informed as possible. We'll we'll see how we do. Um, no, I'll, I'll do the entertainment. You do the informing. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's a good uh, one two combo. I like that punch. It's not a in the universe. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll we'll uh, um, dive in before we get into um, the topic today, and we're going to be talking a little bit about um, some some testing options, some blood chemistry. I'm going to go a little bit into um, Reagan's. Uh, he's he, he's got a few slides on kind of the organization and. and um, how we started and, and some of those origin stories. So I'm, I'm going to share some of that. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the hack last night. We had a few tech glitches, um, got started late. So um, we apologize if you missed it, if you got on and, and logged off before we got there. Um, but it was a really, really cool hack. Um, I want to go over the two challenges that you all have. Um, so last week, the challenge was to get tested. So get some, um, get some blood chemistry or maybe a stool test. Reach out to us if you don't have resources, um, but know what's, what's going on there. Um, and then this, this week, uh, the challenge is, is find your favorite peptide. Um, Reagan went through a few specific peptides here and um, wanted to wanted to make sure you guys had a, had an idea on how you can uh, find your favorites. So there's Solank for more stress, anxiety, five amino one MQ for energy. It's also great for, um, for, uh, weight loss, sleep, uh, epitalin. Um, so those are kind of the three main peptides we talked about last night and, um, which ones, you know, figure out which, which one's your favorite. If you're, if you're not um, utilizing any uh, peptides right now, uh, reach out to us. You can um, reach out to the, the East West Health uh, phone number. You can call or text that at 801-582-2011. And uh, we'll, we'd love to uh, connect with you. So Andy, be, uh, before we, we jump in too much, um, this is this is some some new information I'm going to be covering today or new slides um, from from Reagan and um, talking about uh, we, he's got some some really interesting stuff on the peptide expert. Um, but what do you have any favorite um, peptides that you really have uh, have liked or been excited or intrigued by? Look, I've, from a health coaching perspective, I mean, certainly the ones you've mentioned because they're fundamental, right? You know, they're, they're a great um, almost introduction baseline, for the want of a better term, around peptides. Who doesn't need help with sleep? You know, it's a very common issue, yeah. of, you know, resetting your sleep patterns, your circadian rhythms. Um, the only two peptides I've tried since I've been back at the practice has been the semaglutide, which I've mentioned before. For me as an individual, it was phenomenal. It's particularly focused on weight loss, helps you with your A1C. And um, I've recently started on NAD. Yeah. You know, it's it's seen as one of the anti-aging. And um, I've been doing that probably regularly for four weeks now. And um, 
it's hard to pinpoint because I just feel like my health is improving overall so much that it's hard to say, but I'm, I, I feel it's, it's a contributor to, um, yeah. you know, my health overall. And certainly I have, my energy is so good. Love that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think you're, you're doing a lot of other things besides peptides and that's, that's yeah. really one thing that we're um, really big about is, is, you know, at East West, it's not one thing that's the answer. It's not peptides that's going to be the answer. It's it's putting yeah. all the pieces together and really having the right mindset. Um, yeah, I also- exactly. And, you know, from the health coaching perspective and factoring in meeting people where they are as individuals and helping them with lifestyle, tiny wee tweaks and changes, you know, that is integral to the, you know, the holistic approach that we have. Oh, so, so true. Um, I know we had, uh, we've had patients in the past that have um, got into the program and, and uh, have kind of opted out or said, you know, I I don't want to do anything lifestyle. I don't want to change what I'm eating. I want to see if these peptides actually work. And, and that's just not our philosophy is we, we use multiple modalities of how we know is, or people are going to get results um, and, and big results. And so, yeah, someone might see men, you know, that I think, especially with like, uh, some maglutide, some of the, um, uh, weight loss peptides, they can be helpful if someone doesn't want to change their, their eating habits. But like our goal is we, we want to create just this amazing health span. And if, you know, we're putting these peptides in, but someone's still just, uh, eating a lot of um, processed foods, sugars, um, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, G- GMO-ridden foods, Yeah, they're, they're still going to, you know, the peptides are helping repair, but then you're just breaking it down as soon as you eat something, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, just touching on the uh, last week's challenge of the testing, you know, we do all this testing up front with, you know, the the gut testing and what have you. There's so much that we don't know. And that's why it's imperative to have the testing done and to keep that information current for yourselves. Because, you know, we can do the reset and restore. We can do the program. But unless we're keeping in check with our health, you know, with, you know, the potential ongoing care and review, our habits can slip and things can creep back in. So, you know, it's, we've talked about this so many times, but, you know, it's a daily commitment to your health and well-being. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, and I'm just kind of picking out a few of the different um, slides from this uh, presentation for everyone. But on this slide, I think it, go, it, it leads right into that where 90 per, 94% of all failures are due to not having a system in place. If they do, it's it's the wrong system. Mm-hmm. So really, having a plan and uh, an approach is is really important. So you know, ju- the the peptides is one thing, and I think if you look at our healthcare system, if you had like a, a sick fish, um, the 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 first theory, and this is how our healthcare system works, is you medicate the fish, and um, I, I think if you if you really think about that. Um, and I've never owned a fish, so I don't really know exactly how, how to treat a fish, but you, know, you, you think about even if it's a dog or an animal, um, you, you might look at their environment, you might look at yeah. um, what, what food they're, they're intaking, some of those things before you just jump to, oh, well, we, we, we got to get this, this fish on, you know, whatever medication fish have. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah and, and it does the same for humans um if if we're sick you know maybe understanding what what's that root level cause of the sickness then maybe there's a medication that that can help with it or maybe there's some some lifestyle some some environment some other things that can help enhance that that person's or that fish's health as opposed to um, putting a, a, a chemical or a medication um, into that that component, so I think that's that's one of the biggest problems with kind of the 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 healthcare system in general. But also, um, you know, our our mindsets is usually set to like, what's the quick fix? 
you know, we, we talk about the patient that the, the pay, we've had patients come into our programs where they don't want to make any changes other than, well, I want to have these peptides and really yeah. see how they work. And, you know, that not to say that's the, that's a horrible mindset. I think, you know, it's, it's, you want to see if things are working, but at the same time, why would you knowingly put things in your body that are going to de- de- degrade your health or not create like a, a, a prolonged life? Now, there's certain things like, you know, you can eat for entertainment, um, you eat for nourishment, um, or a lot of people eat because they're bored. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and uh, if, if you can kind of eliminate the, the, the entertainment, I think is, is acceptable in moderation because what it happens is uh, that, that uh, the eating becomes, uh, you know, the entertainment due to boredom. And, um, and then it's just, uh, then you end up overeating, but yeah. there's, there's certain times where I'll, I'll eat something that I know, oh man, this has probably way too much sugar. I'm going to have to work this off. I'm going to have to do a lot of push-ups, a lot of squats after this meal um, or, or whatever it is. But, um, you know, having, having that understanding and then having ways to, to go around that, I think are really important because if you, if you look at like, what's, what's the real theory that you should look at? Cause theory one is, is medicating the fish. And that's what our traditional healthcare system does. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, is you come in, you're sick. Oh, great. We got, we got a med for that. You got thyroid issues. We got a med for that. Got some, some kind of, um, mystery illness. Sometimes they don't, but they'll still put you on anti-inflammatories and other, um, you know, some, some either, whether it's steroids or non-steroidal. Right. Uh, And people with chronic pain. Yeah. It's yeah. And, and so, you know, I love this theory, um, theory too. Well, let's look at, let's start from the basics. Let's, let's clean the fish. So looking at the fish's environment, what, what's, what's going on. Um, I, I, I think about um, today's world versus, you know, when I was, um, you know, young kid growing up, even just the, the screen toxicity, <laughs> is uh is is ridiculous how many screens are are shown at us all the time and in our environment how many emfs um not to say you can completely get rid of those but really looking at that a lot of people that that's a huge impact i know my wife um sierra she if if we're in an area where there's too many emfs we were looking for houses and we're in uh in saint george They have, you know, I'm sure you guys have all seen the 5G towers and we found this house that was, you know, just gorgeous house, but literally from the front porch, you could look up on the hill that was just in front of the house and there's this huge 5G tower and uh, we were considering, you know, making an offer and we saw that and my wife, she gets really impacted with that. I'm a lot less, um, impacted by um the the emf side of things mine's more food related and um so i talked to ray and i was like well what do you think and he's like man i would i would price stare clear but there is ways of kind of shielding it and protecting your house but it's always going to be there and um, why don't you get an emf reader so we got one of those emf readers i think it was like 30 bucks on amazon it wasn't anything crazy we tested it in our house our current house and it was pretty um pretty uh, minimal and decent. We went up there and the, the, it just went off the radars. Like I, I don't even know how many units it was because it went to the max right. of the reader. And it's, it's crazy how just looking at, like looking at your environment, you can actually see some things that, oh man, we, we need to do something different. So if we had already lived there, I would say, okay, we need to figure out how to get some EMF blocking things internally in the house. Um, there's some, there's some different devices and I'm not, this isn't about EMFs today, but I'm just, uh, trying to say like, look, look at your environment from, uh, from that perspective, as well as maybe what foods, Uh, Andy, uh, you, you do a lot of the the coaching and all of our programs, I'm sure, you know, people's pantry, that's, that's part of their environment, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, quite often, depending on the focus for the, for the patient, you know, quite often um, an early conversation is around cleaning out your pantry and your freezer. Because, you know, sometimes you can forget your freezer and weight loss is a common goal, you know, and people will have things squirreled away in their freezer. That they yeah. get out. Like if, if I don't have anything to eat, I always get this frozen yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, there's always some some little, you know, pint of or, or ice, know, cream. <laughs> ice cream in the back of the freezer. So that's a very early conversation is around, you know, hey, have you cleaned this out? You're feeling really pumped and focused at the beginning of your program, but let's make sure your environment is can help you follow through on that and help support you on that. Yeah, I think that goes back to, um, it's Ben Hardy is the, the writer on it, the author. It's um, a willpower, um, Oh man, it's it's all about having having a plan and creating a an environment that protects you. I can't I, the name the name of the book escapes me. I know Reagan's talked a lot about it, but um, it's willpower versus um, just just planning. And you know when you're when you're hungry, when you're like down and out, and you're looking for that that junk food, and you sneak into the freezer and it's sitting right there. Yeah. It's way easier to just over consume that. And we're, we're not here saying you can't have ice cream. It's just in certain instances, especially when you're trying to do a reset, which that's kind of the first phase, um, we, we want to avoid some of those things so your body can really get whole. Yeah. Um, and so, but when you're in that, that kind of that down phase and you open the freezer and you see that you, know, you could plow through a pint of ice cream pretty quick and easy, right? Oh, you can eat a pint of ice cream and watching an episode of Sex in the City, and they promote <laughs> it in that. <laughs> you know, it's it's it can, and uh, you know, the risk of making it a gender issue. It can be a woman's comfort food. Oh yeah, and it's surprising what you will remember is squirreled away in the house when you need that comfort. That's you. That's... Will, you will remember it in that space, whereas you know, normally when you're feeling like you know you, you're really pumped and focused, and it's a great day, and you know nothing can alter your vibration. You don't even think that it's there, but the moment you're off that vibration, you remember that pint of ice cream. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So I I I really like the looking at. Um, you know, the environment and cleaning the tank and, and really looking at the internal environment too. And that's where um, it kind of, we go into some of the testing components of things. Because, you know, if you don't understand, um, there's a lot of instances where, where, you know, there can be misdiagnoses where it's just, whether it's a lot of times we have, um, you know, if you have low energy, you go in to see the doctor and it's just, oh, you, you either need to sleep more or you got young kids and that's just a, a product of it or you know, whatever that is. And um, it can be, you know, especially if you run your labs and there's not something like beaming red hot on your lab saying, oh, you have a disease pattern. Um, this is where it, it's really easy to fall into you know, it's, it's just, you know, you need a, it's all in your head or all those different components that I think, um, the, the, the traditional medical system has, has implanted. And then it turns into, oh, well, maybe you need some benzos or maybe you need this. And mm -hmm. that's really not what the problem is. It's, it's really looking at how you can, um, uncover that. And so, um, this is, this is one of, I, I love this slide where, um, and I, I truly believe this with cutting edge diagnostics, integrative treatments, um, you can look, feel and perform your best. So 200% increase in energy, 80% sleep improvement. We see three times the increase in future health confidence with our, our patients here. And I think you know, Andy, you've, you, you talked about your energy levels with some of the peptides and what you've done. Cause you've, you've done some work on it and these peptides can be so, um, so impactful, mm -hmm. um, from, from these, uh, components, yeah. anything to add there? Yeah. 
And then Sorry? We'll, oh, I, I just asked, is, do you have anything to add there on this slide? No, I 100% agree. And, you know, as you were saying, and particularly feedback from our patients, um, you know, particularly people entering into the program, and we're doing that reset, 60-day reset as the focus for the first two months. Yeah. And it's amazing the feedback of, oh, I feel so good, you know, and it is that combination as, as, we've, as we've said of the peptides and the dietary and lifestyle changes. But people that come in, you know, with their baseline here, you know, with the lower baseline, um, those first 60 days can be quite transformative for people to have that reset process. Totally. Yeah. Well, and, and we work with, so th these are kind of our common um, uh, different patients and, and clients that we have that we've worked with. We've, we've ran so many different labs. Um, we have the, the overachieving entrepreneur that's kind of put their health off and just focused on, on work. We have the family boss, which is, you know, the, the stay at home mom or, or dad that's just been so focused on, on getting the kids raised and kind of puts their health to the side as well. The ADD entrepreneur and the, um, and even the, the skeptical partner, these are all kind of the, the typical um, patients that we see. And, and we have um, seen so many different labs where um, if we can, we can just fine tune some things, because if, if you were to get these labs ran typically um, from your doctor, they, they may see a couple high markers, but what's beautiful about functional blood chemistry is we can actually look at it from a fine tooth. Um, so some of these yellow markers are not necessarily where someone's completely off the rails, but they're, they're getting on the line where, okay, we need to, we need to steer it in the right direction. Um, and those are important things. And I, I want to make it clear, I'm, I'm not a doctor and I'm not trying to say I, I interpret labs. I can understand them from a lifestyle and um, a, a, a perspective there. But in this instance, you have like your, your ALT, that's where your liver enzymes are, are elevated. So you have some, some detoxing problems. Um, you have some, some immune issues. You got a vitamin D deficiency. Your homocysteine's through. That's a really high number, which that can be. Uh, that's that's an inflammatory marker, and so we got to get some inflammation down. Cholesterol um, is an interesting, uh, really interesting uh, marker. Where you know, from from my perspective, typically if someone's got higher cholesterol levels, they're going to be uh, put on a medication, right, Andy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they go on a statin. Statins are very common. That's that's the the common, and that's kind of the 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 standard of medicine that's been taught. And the the crazy thing is, is Andy, do you know what like um in our bloodstream why our body starts producing more cholesterol typically from a physiological standpoint? Oh, I we were talking about it. It you know it's part of helping to get rid of things in your body, right? To, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's part of like a cleaning system per se. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it is your, so when your inflammation is up, typically your body will create more cholesterol because it helps clear some of that out. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's a good indicator that, okay, this person has high inflammation. So it would make sense that their homocysteine's through the roof if their cholesterol is high. But if we're just using a medication to suppress that cholesterol, that's kind of your like your trigger marker. That's like, hey, we have some inflammation here. We got to do some cleanup, and you know your body needs help rather than if we just suppress it. It's kind of like the check engine light in a in your car is if you just like oh, I'm going to pull the plug on the check engine light. It's it's not a big deal. <clears throat> um, same with symptoms. If we're just masking symptoms with medication, that can be a problem. But I look at cholesterol, that's a symptom of an underlying issue where, okay, we got loads of inflammation. We got to clean the environment, clear some things up. Um, we can utilize peptides with that. Obviously, lifestyle is a big thing, what you're eating. Um, and we just fine tune those things. And magically, like those things start, start, uh, start normalizing as opposed to like, uh, you know, you get on a statin and if you stop taking that statin, guess what happens? Yeah, it goes, goes right back up, right? 
Mm-hmm. So these are some really, really important components to, to understand. We also look at um, uh, 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 metabolomics is uh, this test. And so we can look at these five key um, areas of oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, um, some different omega imbalances. If your six, omega-6 to omega-3 ratios are off, that can be very inflammatory. Um, you got to be a lot heavier on the omega-3 side of things. Um, you can have toxic exposure. And, uh, and then also there's methylation imbalances, and that can be due to some genetic um, predispositions. And so we, you know, you really have to figure out how we can uh, um, optimize your current, your current stakes. We can't change your genetics, right? That's and that, that would take a little more invasive approach to, to change someone's genetics, but we can. The, the beautiful thing about epigenetics is you know, we can really influence your um, how your body responds to certain stimulus um, just by making some tweaks and working around um, around those genetics by increasing different nutrition increasing um, different B vitamins, glutathione, um, and those, those components are really important. Um, and so this, these are some fascinating tests that, you know, this is simple blood drop and urine analysis, and we can get um, some of these uh, details, which are really, really insightful. Um, this is another really insightful one from, uh, this gives you two different tests here. You have your uh, cortisol and your salivary hormone which this is um, how those ranges should be. So in the morning, you should wake up, your cortisol is going to be um, more elevated. Um, and then as the day goes on, it's going to gradually drop. And cortisol is a really important hormone. Um, it's, uh, it in, indicates your adrenal health um, and, and it can really help. This test can help us understand, you know, what are there some more external more internal things going on with your, your adrenal function. And if we're, if, if we're seeing abnormalities there, um, it's important to, to figure out, okay, how can we um, get, get the stress response? Sometimes it's improved. And sometimes like the, the, we'll have patients that their, their cortisol levels or their stress response is so elevated. Um, they're just burning themselves out. And so there's some really important things that we have to look at and, and fine tune there. And just, just, uh, do you, Andy, do you know what the inverse of cortisol is? What, what the opposite hormone is? No. Quiz. So cortisol and melatonin. So melatonin is oh, sleepy hormone right. and then cortisol is your energy. So they actually work exactly like in sync. And so when those get out of sync, energy levels get off your sleep gets off. Like it's, you're all just jumbled up, but if those can be in a nice circadian rhythm, oh man, life, like you just feel better, your energy's better. So it's, it's a really cool test. And that's why um, there's four different points in the day when we test that, because we want to see, okay, where, where are all these levels at? Um, so we can really understand that trend because, you know, one single pinpoint in the day, maybe that time of day you're good, but if we don't look at the whole thing, um, it, it doesn't give us a clear picture. And then this, this one on the right, this is some results from uh, a stool test. And this is looking in your, your digestive system, looking at different inflammatory markers, dysbiosis, digestion, um, and then if there's any infection. So this, this instance, we got three like tens, which that's really high. So we have a lot of inflammation in this uh, instance. There's, uh, there's uh, some dysbiosis, meaning, um, meaning leaky gut, which that's where your, your gut lining can start to um, get so inflamed where you'll start um, leaking uh, proteins into your, um, into your body, into your bloodstream, as opposed to you know, keeping nice tight gap junctions where your body can absorb nutrients your digestive tracts working appropriately. And so those are some important things to, to know and understand. And there's, um, you know, just like with the, the traditional medical model, there's medications that you can take for those that will typically suppress the symptoms that, that you experience from those. 
or there's certain things that you can you can take and ingest to help heal that that internal gut lining, which I think is the really most important um, component. So uh, three ways to exceed here, uh, succeed here um, and, and in our Accelerate Wellness. So the first stage is we analyze with some testing and we're looking at optimizing and using um, all the different components that we've talked about. Um, and then number three is we, we transform. Um, someone from being inflamed, tired, maybe no energy and a lot of toxicity to having energy, having uh, and feeling really fulfilled. Um, I, I, I like that infographic. I think it's it's pretty cool. I, I don't think I've ever I, I went I had a chance to go through these slides a little bit before this, but these are these are pretty fresh for me, Andy. Um, how do you oh, like okay. this infographic? <laughs> Yeah, this is this is awesome because it's really showing those common those areas that people present with, you know, in the center there. Love it. So, and then there's four stages of of health and lifespan recovery, and so we have our three kind of initially when someone um, uh, gets into our accelerate programs, we take them through a reset. Um, the Andy, you you mentioned that where people just like light up. That's where you, know, you start resetting some of those things and cleaning that environment, um, getting yeah. their mindset, their hormones, and an adrenal response right size. They you get some pretty cool changes, right? Yeah. Oh, it's it's awesome. And the cell core products, being the detox, have been fantastic. You know, people. Yeah. And it's interesting to hear people's feedback on the four different stages too, on how they're feeling and how they're progressing. It's, it's, it's very clear. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. there's some, some awesome stuff with that. Um, and then stage two is the recharge. So we're really looking at uh, revitalizing the DNA, the full detoxification and getting uh, your mitochondrial health um, up and running. So uh, another pop quiz for you, Andy, not to put you on the spot. Oh, don't. <laughs> You remember what the uh, what the peptide for mitochondrial function? I, this is the easiest one for me to remember, just because it it matches mitochondrial or mitochondria. You're even throwing Mots. me a big hint. Oh, Mot C. Yeah. <laughs> there of we course. go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you'll you'll probably have some Mot C in there. Um, probably we will typically use epitalin in both yeah. cases. Yeah. Um, there for DNA as well as the, the hormone and adrenal reset. And then the third stage restore. Um, so this is really where we can start to, um, you know, get, restore your health back to like it's, it's younger, younger stage, um, getting your metabolic um, uh, areas uh, really fine tuned, get the, get your digestive health, your gut health um, optimized as well as cognition. And that's, that's one thing that I think everyone, uh, I, I haven't heard of anyone that wouldn't like to have better brain health. Have you, Andy? No, that's a hard no. Everyone, <laughs> everyone wants better brain health. Yeah, I don't, I don't think if you, if you say like, uh, would you like to have better memory, better recall, name recall, uh, being able to, uh, uh, to have a really clear cognition up into yeah. your late years. Yeah. I, I, I don't think anyone's opposed to, to, to have that improved concentration and to be present and engaged is so valuable. Totally. Yeah. 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 And I think it's, it's an important component and it's, it's not, it's something that typically if you look at um, brain health and cognition, it's something while why it's, it's a really important uh, part of our program but it's in, you'll start noticing those effects more in stage three, because typically there's a lot of underlying issues that are causing brain fog and memory loss and, and those components. So as we start um, tweaking and, and resolving those, man, just light bulbs come on, you get, there's better mental clarity and everything. So I think that's a really cool component. And we start really focusing more on it in the, the third phase and restorative a phase and then four is is really just taking it all together to help you reclaim your confidence lifespan um have better relationships because that's that's one thing that i think is not talked about enough in in health is how it affects relationships 
Oh, do you agree with that, Andy? Oh, absolutely. You know, number one, the relationship with yourself. Totally, yeah. And, of course, then with the people you're closest to, you know, the people you love you the most are quite often the people that are literally but figuratively close to you, and that they can be the people that you can have the challenge with to, you know, not be cranky with at the end of the day because your, your day sucked, you know, and yeah. then people you love the most and they can bear the brunt of some things. So, yeah, the relationship with yourself and the relationship with the people that are close to you, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's so critical. I, you you had called me to talk a little bit about um, men's mental health and how yes. it's never really, really talked about. And I think oh. um, you like nailed it on the head when it's when you're like, yeah, the, like men never have it. Like they they usually don't um, focus on their their own mental health. They don't have anyone to really talk yeah. to emotionally yeah. other than usually it's their wives at the end of the day. And they're really cranky and just unloading. And the wives got to learn how to be like, OK, he's not mad at me. He's yeah. just. And, and he brought crap home, didn't mean to, but it's hard to keep those boundaries in place when, when someone comes in and they're presenting that to you, right? It's hard to be clear and think, look, this, is, this isn't, you're never arguing about the socks on the floor if you're arguing about the socks on the floor. <laughs> it's something else, you know? No. And um, the discussion that we had, I was like, you know, I was born in 62, so I grew up in a very different environment that you did. You're, yeah. you're significantly younger than I am. But, you know, certainly for my generation and growing up in New Zealand, it was very much we saw our mothers having neighbours pop in for afternoon tea and things like this. And we grew up learning from that, that women share and women talk to each other about what we talk about all our we talk about everything to each other. If you think <laughs> maybe, we're not, you're some, wrong. <laughs> sometimes too much. <laughs> yeah, we share with our friends, which is awesome. Men don't have that network and you don't you don't have those connections in the same way. And it's like, who do you talk to about your staff? Who do you share with that can just truly listen to you? Yeah, you know, there's a big void and it's like men need these connections. You need to have that um, that mate that you can call and say, hey, dude, I want to just grab a coffee this afternoon or, you know, I just I just need to unload. Yeah, well, I, I, I have a number of people I can do that with. How many people <laughs> do you have that you can do that with? That's not your partner. That's not your significant other. Yeah, you know, it's a rare thing. No, and I think that's, um, you know, when you start improving your, your overall health, you know, that's, that's one, one additional component that's really important is that, that relationship health, as well as your own men, mental health is, is looking yeah. at, you know, how, who, who am I speaking with? Am I speaking truly, honestly, with integrity and, and who are those people? And so I think that's, that's a, a really intriguing component. I thought it was a, a really interesting topic and maybe we'll, we'll do more on that later. Um, but I, this is, this is a really um, just, just overall a, a, a really fun component and um, stage process that we take our patients through. Um, let's see it. And I think we're, we're coming up on time. And so I'm not going to go um, too much deeper into this. Um, just if, if you're not part of our, our community already and part of the Accelerate uh, Wellness programs and you haven't experienced uh, what, what, we, what we do yet, give us a call. Text us 801-582-2011. Um, you can email us. Um, it's actually help at AccuEastWast.com. Um, and uh, we actually just got a, a updated web page for Reagan. It's the peptideexpert.com. So take a look at that um, and uh, reach out. Uh, we offer, you, you can start with kind of a, a complimentary introduction with one of our um, care coordinators, or um, uh, we, we obviously can do uh, paid evaluations and consultations um, once you're ready for that. But um, Andy, anything else to, to add before we wrap things up? No, um, I just really look forward to jumping into 
men's connections and support networks at another time because it's something that keeps coming up with clients. You know, who do you, like who do you have to talk to? Yeah, who do you have to trust? So I look forward to jumping into that a bit more. Beautiful. Time. We'll we'll yeah. we'll have to we we got to get that uh, carved out in the, yeah. in the get that on the dance things. card. Yes. Yeah. My my problem. I'm definitely not the expert with that. So we're gonna probably have to bring in an expert on that one because otherwise people would be like, "Yeah, you're you're just like the typical." <laughs> um, so, uh, anyways, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We'll be back uh, same wonderful time, same wonderful place here at the Never Stop Healing Podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks, Kate. Bye.